We are exactly a month away from the release of Assassin's Creed Mirage, and expectations online seem to be mixed. Some people are head over heels for a return to a more traditional version of Assassin's Creed, while others are more skeptical due to the game being a smaller project built from the systems in AC Valhalla. I think skepticism is warranted, and my last video on Mirage did showcase just how much of Valhalla's DNA can be seen even in a brief trailer, but nonetheless I am really looking forward to the game. One of my earliest concerns was that the game would use the surface level concept of returning to its roots to draw players in without actually working to do those roots justice. As a reminder, Valhalla promised to be more in line with tradition with social stealth and a focus on the hidden ones, but the final product failed to capitalize on those things. However, while I can't tell you how Mirage will play and if it will succeed, I've seen enough to hope that the team behind the game isn't making the same mistakes that Ubisoft made last time. While this will clearly be a smaller scale effort that reuses a lot of ideas and assets from Valhalla, I've identified five things from recent marketing that have excited me for this game. On my channel, I have an hour-long video talking about why Valhalla is my least favorite game in the series, and one of my biggest issues was how the quantity of the content got in the way of the quality. There's only so much you can trust in pre-release gameplay videos, but so far I'm happy with the level of polish that I'm seeing in Mirage. Valhalla had so many of these ugly finisher animations where the camera would awkwardly get anchored somewhere on Eivor's body and get jerked around to the point that you couldn't see what was going on half the time. Mirage also takes the approach of slowing things down for every kill, but the camera is now stable and framed so that the player can see all the action. I imagine far fewer animations and only one type of weapon meant they had more space to smooth these things out. This chain kill looks smooth even more so than the version we had in Origins, and these air assassinations don't give me a headache. Another thing I'm excited for is the mission variety outside of the main plot. In Game Informer's recent cover story on Mirage, quest director Simon Arsenault said, the contracts are usually tied to factions or characters you've met in the main story, it's a way for us to expand a bit of their narrative. This reminds me of AC Brotherhood, in my opinion the most polished AC game, where every mission had a function that tied back to Ezio's overall goals in the city of Rome. So far it seems like the smaller scale of AC Mirage is allowing us to go back to that, and giving us content that expands upon the core experience instead of just prolonging it. Side mission quality and animation quality may seem like very different things, but they both feel indicative of a different overall design approach with Mirage. The focus seems to be on doing a few things well, as opposed to doing a billion things for the player to get lost in, and if they stick the landing I think it'll be a breath of fresh air for this series. A point of contention within the fanbase is what exactly stealth should look like in this series. The early games didn't have very impressive traditional stealth mechanics with no crouch system and very simple enemy AI and layout, but they had social stealth mechanics that were unique and that no other franchise has really explored in the same way. Unity came in and started to change that, giving us crouch and cover stealth with a wider variety of tools, but by that time in the series we were also seeing fewer options for using social stealth, and by Origins it was gone completely. Mirage is bringing back social stealth and it has a tool-based crouch and cover system as well. This makes Mirage only the third game in the series to really have both, and this gives it a ton of potential within the franchise. We've seen Basim's tool wheels, so we know we're getting the blow dart, throwing knives, smoke bombs, and noisemakers, with further modifiers and upgrades for each, and we've also seen that the team is focused on working on the detection system, something the series has struggled with, especially with Valhalla. This may seem like a cynically low bar, but if Mirage simply has a working detection system to go with its tools and stealth-focused level design, while also integrating systemic blending into the experience in a meaningful way, it could end up being an easy pick for one of the best stealth systems in this franchise. The parkour is a big one for people, and the reactions have been mixed so far. Some people have been waiting a long time for a return to parkour mechanics that allow for a bit more player agency, with a longing for controlled descent options and parkour eject options, and it's clear that Mirage will not have these things. In a Reddit AMA, it was already confirmed by the devs that there will be no side ejects in Mirage, and Game Informer's showcase implied that these systems will remain comparably similar to Valhalla, which was expected from the start. However, the world design is a huge step up from what we saw in the last three games, reminding me more of the Ezio trilogy and AC1 than any of the later games afterwards. Everything is based around having multiple pathways open to you at any time, and while it's looking like you will still just be holding X to auto parkour, we will finally be returning to a world where touching the ground between objectives will be optional. The animations are slow and there is a sizable gap between them, but they flow together fluidly. 
While Unity had more impressive animations, the transitions were choppy and they would often be stretched to fit distances that didn't seem to fit Arno's abilities. The world here feels specifically catered to Basim's animations, with every post and obstacle being the exact distance it needs to be to look clean, like in the Ezio days. The world also seems to have a sense of variety. Sometimes the games that only feature one city can feel a little bit one note, and that's not to say that that one note isn't usually very good, but back when Constantinople, for example, promised visually distinct districts, it just didn't end up being true. We haven't seen a ton so far, so this could be no more true now than it was back in 2011, but the areas we have seen do legitimately look like they have variety, giving us four districts and the wilderness outside, feeling reminiscent of AC Brotherhood's more varied map that had Vatican City, Rome proper, and the countryside ruins. In my most recent video, I talked about how weirdly unwilling the series is to let you play the role of an assassin in a series called Assassin's Creed. Now, Basim is a hidden one, but the organization is essentially the same, and this would technically make him only the second protagonist in the series to just be a run-of-the-mill member of the Assassins after the very first game, with no revenge plot or redemption tale overshadowing the actual goals of the Brotherhood. Now, anyone who has played Valhalla will know that Basim has plenty of baggage on his own that I'm sure will make his story a very personal one, but it's refreshing to see a game where your main character reports to the Brotherhood regularly and isn't actually calling the shots himself. We have seen that Basim will grow not only as a person, but as an assassin over the course of the game. His robes will change to reflect his rank, and his tools will be upgradable as you progress, reminding me of the gameplay loop of AC1 where you would gain back a rank with every successful kill. To an extent, it looks like this might be the deepest exploration of the organization we've seen in a long time. In Mirage, we see a functional organization with a clear hierarchy and culture. I'm not totally sold on the marketing for AC Mirage. We've been getting a lot of buzzwords and phrases about returning to our roots, but not enough gameplay showcasing this stuff in my opinion. However, one thing I do appreciate is how much Ubisoft Bordeaux is being showcased. There was a time when Ubisoft cared about letting us know the personnel behind the games they made, but around AC Revelations we saw a shift toward making huge productions, with multiple studios all working around the clock to put together a product as fast as possible. With Mirage, we've gotten a lot of dev diaries where members of the team have had the chance to explain the thought process behind their pitch for the game and how it came to fruition. Now, of course, this is still a Ubisoft production with a close corporate eye on everything being done, but I'll still take marketing focused on the human touch any day. Plus, Bordeaux handled the Wrath of the Druids DLC for Valhalla, which was by far my favorite of the bunch, and Valhalla had a lot of DLC. Wrath of the Druids understood the strengths of Valhalla, giving us a tighter narrative and some fun side content, in contrast to the Siege of Paris DLC, which tried to integrate a bigger city and increase stealth options into a game that simply couldn't support them. This gives me hope that AC Mirage isn't just returning to its roots for the sake of marketing, and that the team actually is passionate about doing this right. It's a lot easier to have faith in a group of people building something that they fought to be allowed to make, as opposed to just being another product taped together by a dozen different studios. I am skeptical about AC Mirage, like many others. We haven't seen any combat, things like the assassin focus ability and corrosive knives to make bodies disappear are pretty goofy, and a lot of stuff is just lifted from Valhalla in ways I don't like. But I think it's fine to be skeptical while also being excited, because I really do like what I see from Mirage, but I don't have any expectations for it. Maybe it won't deliver, I don't know. But so far what they've shown us has indicated a level of polish and interesting creative ideas that I want to see more of. With so little time left before launch, I hope they show us more of the game so people can make the most informed decision possible. What I am impressed by goes far beyond just the surface level of returning to their roots. Valhalla said they would do that. So far, the team behind Mirage seems to actually want to do those things well. It isn't looking like their biggest or most creative game, but if that passion shines through, then I'll be more than happy to spend 50 bucks on it. Whether or not they hit the mark remains to be seen, but we will find out together in a month. Thank you for watching. That's all I have for right now. Let me know your thoughts on Mirage in the comments, but otherwise, have a great day, and take care of yourself.